Welcome, everyone. Uh, really happy that you joined us today. Uh, we've got an absolutely fantastic tour, and we're calling it a magical New York Christmas because that's exactly what this is. Uh, when you, we walk through this, you'll realize this tour is absolutely packed with some of the most amazing uh, destinations and, and highlights of, of the uh, city, of the area. Uh, it's just absolutely fantastic. So I know you will enjoy it and uh, have fun uh, just looking, watching, and um, uh, hopefully wanting to be a part of this uh, incredible, magical New York City Christmas. The, the dates, December 9th through the 13th. 2024, and uh, we're, we're starting on a Monday, and we're going to be traveling all the way through a, to a Friday, so uh, it's absolutely perfect because uh, it always seems as though the, uh, New York City uh, is just packed over the weekend, so during the middle of the week, we have a, just a little bit more room to, to move around, so it's, it's absolutely perfect. So let's just take a real quick look at what we're doing. This is a five-day tour, a one hotel stay, and we're right in the Times Square area, so it is uh, really perfect. Breakfast and dinner are included daily, so uh, your your main meals uh, are, are all included, and it really gives you a wonderful opportunity to really enjoy. So I'm going to kind of uh, take off and show you just a little bit here. We're heading into um, Manhattan and, uh, well, actually going into the Queens to the airport to LaGuardia. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be uh, in lower Manhattan, midtown Manhattan. We're going to go out to the Statue of Liberty. Diker Heights is in Brooklyn, and we're going to tour a little bit of Brooklyn. So I'm going to show you a, 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 a real quick overview. This is New York City, and these are the boroughs of New York. Number one is Manhattan. So you can see it's really one of the smallest of the of the uh, 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 smallest of the governmental districts of New York of the boroughs. And um, and then we're going to spend uh, most of our time Midtown and then Lower Manhattan. So that little green spot that is just below. Um, uh, the Manhattan, the still green is the Statue of Liberty area in Ellis Island. And number two on the map is uh, Brooklyn. And so we're going down into Brooklyn. But when I mentioned to you that the airport is in Queens, it's uh, number three uh, on the map is Queens. And both uh, uh, Kennedy Airport and LaGuardia are located on Queens. And then you get up to number four. We're not going to get up to the Bronx and we're not going to get to Staten Island, four and five. But we'll be in three of the of the five Bronx, so of uh, uh, the five boroughs. So. We're going to get a little bit of time in New York, and I, I know that you will absolutely enjoy it. So uh, let's uh, see what we're you're in for. So, of course, um, we have a flight to uh, LaGuardia, uh, <clears throat> and then we're going to get in and when, as soon as we're finished and arrive in LaGuardia, grab our luggage, get on our private motor coach, we're going to do panoramic sights of Manhattan. And, you know, of course, we can't get into our uh, uh, hotel until late afternoon, so it gives us plenty of time to show you some of the real highlights of Manhattan. And, you know, some of those are really going to be fun, especially Christmas time. And I absolutely love looking at the windows of, of some of these uh, beautiful stores, uh, whether it's Macy's or or Saks Fifth Avenue, or even Tiffany's that, that actually wraps the building like a present. There are so many beautiful things to be seeing in New York. We're going to take you down by Rockefeller Center. We're going to spend quite a bit of time down in the Rockefeller Center area. And here you can see the Rockefeller Christmas tree. Uh, it it uh, will be lit a little bit later on, but you see the ice skating rink, the statue of Poseidon, and all of that is kind of in a level just down below street level. But uh, we'll see quite a bit of that, and you'll have time to maybe get out, do a little bit of walking. And I can see right here, uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral is up on 
um, the left of the screen, and those are some of the uh, windows of Saks Fifth Avenue. So absolutely incredible the windows and uh, we always have to take a little time to share some of that but it's a busy place and here of course is Tiffany's right in front with they when they wrap the the building with a big bow it just uh, it's one of the things that I always think is pretty pretty neat and uh, it you know it all fits in with uh, uh, the the area it is so beautiful but here, this is all on uh, Fifth Avenue, and as you drive down Fifth Avenue, of course, you know it's there's there's kind of a a funny odor going on, and I've always decided that's the smell of burning uh, plastic, you know, when people are swiping their credit cards so fast. But it's always um, a fun place to be, and just driving down, seeing all the uh, twenty five thousand taxis that are in New York City, as well as the black cars and all of the transportation that get people back and forth throughout uh, this area of Manhattan where a lot of the beautiful stores are is just really kind of a, a fun place to be. But we're gonna show you some of those highlights before we um, get to the hotel, but boy, uh, New York at Christmas time is always one of the most festive places and fun and great, great uh, spot for us to enjoy an incredible meal. We're going to start off our first meal at Carmine's and uh, Carmine's is, I think it's just a really one, one heck of a, a, a neat place. Carmine's has been around for about 35 years and it, it is great Southern Italian um, family style food in New York. It's always busy. You can't get into Carmine's without a reservation. And of course we handle all of that for you and we'll sit at a uh, um, uh, group tables and they'll keep bringing out food that you will just um, absolutely love. So it's fun. It's a great way to begin. And um, I promise you, no one will walk away hungry from Carmine's. It's, it's really, really incredible food. Well, we're going to be staying at a hotel called the M Social Hotel. It's uh, it's a new name hotel that's been there for a while, and we've used it, um, and, uh, you know, over the years uh, because it, the location is really incredible, as well as uh, uh, the fact that it's not right in the Times Square in, in that 42nd Street. It's up a few blocks, so it, it really isn't quite as busy and, and quite as much commotion, but we absolutely love it. And um, it's just a couple blocks from, from Times Square, but re really like it. Um, it has a very contemporary feel to it, but lots of incredible windows that give you looks all the way down um, uh, the uh, Seventh Avenue that, that gets you right down to the uh, uh, where all the action is in New York. But the rooms are very well appointed. Um, a contemporary in feel, but have all the amenities that anybody would need staying. And the nice part about it is, is the whole time we're there, we're in the same place. So you can actually get out and unpack a little bit. But I think it's probably got one of the coolest balconies um, uh, off of the uh, the lounge and, and off of the main um, uh, lobby of the hotel. And you can get out. You can walk out here and walk uh, watch straight down um, a Broadway. It is just absolutely a fantastic hotel and uh, perfect location and uh, really gives you lots of really great things to see. Well, one of the uh, the things that um, we're going to be doing is uh, um, after uh, we're, we have our dinner, we're going up to the top of the rock. And I put this slide on here just to give you an idea as, uh, you know, before we go up a, at the top of the rock, you have to go through a little security and the windows of the the uh, uh, the the building that we're in, which is where uh, NBC Studios are, and um, uh, it, it's absolutely a, a a great spot. And whether you look watch the Today Show or any, it's where or close to the Christmas tree. You're going to be looking across the street out of those windows while you're waiting in line there. Uh, to, uh, to Radio City Music Hall. And this is probably one of the most, uh, I'll talk about to Rockefeller Center here in a minute, but I wanted you to see that John D. Rockefeller Jr. did not miss a trick when he was designing these 
these buildings. So when you're up on this, this level, you're looking out across and seeing some of the incredible medallions that uh, were put on the side of the building that would give people an idea of what was in Radio City Music Hall. And of course, it's dedicated to the arts and the entertainment and the theater and ballet and all of it. So you'll there are several medallions all the way across that building. So you'll have a chance to take a look at it. But then when you get up at the top of the rock, um, uh, uh, and it's called the top of the rock because it's it's uh, almost to the top of Rockefeller Center. And you're going to be looking down and uh, see some of the beautiful sights, the Christmas tree. Uh, you're going to see the ice skating rink, um, the crowds and crowds of people all uh, along here that just absolutely make for um, the festivities that bring people into New York during the holidays. But you're going to get a bird's eye view and what better way to see it than at the top of the rock. You're going to see a lot of the different buildings, um, how they're lit up for Christmas and um, just the magic at night on uh, the top of Rockefeller Center. It's just absolutely incredible. There is a glassed in area that you can go out and and kind of look out over the sea and there's kind of cracks in the glass that are perfect spots for you to get your phone in there to get a really, really good photo. So uh, just a beautiful area. This is more of a daytime shot. You're gonna be seeing it at night, but just wanted you to see how how easy it is to, to get out there and to really enjoy some of the um, great views of the city from the top of the Rockefeller Center. Well, if that isn't a first day, I don't know what is. You are going to be busy the whole time we are in New York. We've got lots of time planned for, uh, lots of things planned for you. Not a lot of free time, but a little bit. But uh, we want to show you everything we possibly can. So that is day one. And then on Tuesday, um, we are going to do, oh, well, of course, you can see uh, the uh, ice skating rink. And that's that's always fun. I forgot to put that slide in there. But the next day, we're going to do something that's kind of dedicated to the arts, Broadway, uh, the performing arts, um, and and uh, the some of the different things that you'll enjoy. Well, we are going to be doing um, a Broadway play, and uh, very often we like to, to introduce people to maybe some of the players that might be in the production that you will be seeing. And so there, uh, there's a small seminar. We go up to the uh, um, some of the th uh, theater rehearsal rooms, and here um, you'll have a chance to meet one of the play the the uh, actors that will be in on Broadway right now. And you'll have a chance to ask them some questions and how long have they been doing it? Uh, ask them about tryouts for the theaters. You can ask them about, um, uh, you know, what it's like working and costume changes or anything that you can think of. It's just really, really fun. And they usually always do a little performance for you. And this is private to our group. There won't be anybody else in there, but just our group. And uh, so it's really a fun thing, but you'll get to see the areas where they, they practice and where the shows all are put together and uh and that is 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 really a cool thing but right then um we're very close to radio city music hall and so we're going to cross over and um go up to radio city music hall and do a tour of this incredible building and believe me i think it's it's incredible this is uh uh probably one of the most amazing buildings in, in New York City. It's been called the showplace of the nation. And it's the headquarters for the Radio City Rockettes and um, the music hall. It, it is just absolutely incredible. But this is one of the buildings. This is a totally art deco building. And it was one of the first buildings that was built in a series of 19 buildings that were built by John D. Rockefeller Jr. And this was right, at, he, he started this complex right after uh, the Great Depression. And um, they, they had to take down like 228 buildings right in the heart of Manhattan and to build this complex. And it's all done in an Art Deco design. And so you're, so what's so cool about going into Radio City Music Hall is all of those Art Deco designs have been really preserved beautifully. Any of the renovations that have been done have really only been things to preserve. 
and not to uh, change or, or, or redo. So this building is probably one of the most perfect ways of looking at uh, uh, Art Deco in uh, the early 30s. I think this building opened like in 1932. So it, it really is outstanding. And, and building all of these buildings and, and uh, getting them um, occupied was really a challenge. Uh, Rockefeller didn't really want the Rockefeller name attached to it because he he felt it should be something more with the city, but uh, he needed it to to uh, get the tenants to come into these buildings and and that he did. Uh, but take a look at the inside of this. Look at the Art Deco design. This is where you basically will will be entering for the tour here. Just absolutely the the fixture the the uh, draperies, the uh, uh, the paintings on the wall, all of it are just really very suggestive of 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 the 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 way all of these nineteen buildings were designed. Some of them, of course, have um, certainly been renovated, and that when when different ones that were have been sold off over the years, but uh, this one certainly is one of the best preserved of of the buildings. This is the main stage. It is absolutely phenomenal. On both sides, right near the stage, is the uh, uh, original Wurlitzer organs. And many times uh, before a show, they will begin uh, playing, and, and it's really kind of a, a, a cool experience. But this is also the theater where the Radio City Rockettes perform the Christmas Spectacular in the evening. And so it's uh, really a fun opportunity to uh, get in this theater when it's not busy and you have a chance to kind of see it. And when you look at these magnificent draperies, we always get seats that are down on the lower section and um, on the floor so you you really get a chance to see that now <laughs> excuse me I got a little bit of a tickle but uh, one of the other fun things is uh, very often we can arrange to have one of the Rockettes come out and meet you and just say hello and uh, if you get get uh, uh, real quick, you can get up and get a picture with one of the Rockettes because it, it, it's really kind of fun. And they'll talk to you a little bit about um, being in the Rockettes and, and that's kind of the thing. When they were first started, um, you didn't have to be quite as tall as you need to be now. Um, uh, today, a rock hat has to be between 5'5 five, five and 5'10, five, but originally it was like 5'2 and 5'6. So um, they've gotten taller and um, uh, the performances are really crazy. And now it is, it, it is absolutely one of the neatest things. And they have become an American icon and they, they do tour around the world at different times and they have done thousands of, of stage shows and and they they do a lot of, of touring and even during world uh, uh, wartime like during uh, the the wars they went out and performed for some of the troops they performed for presidential inaugurations they've just done it all they they were part of the USA shows it's it's really an amazing uh, experience to see them and then you see them on the road. So this afternoon, um, we're doing some other fun things, and and uh, uh, we're going to take you down by Central Park. And of course, at Christmas time, the sleighs are all decorated so beautifully, and uh, we're going to put you all in um, carriages, and they have blankets in the carriages, so you want to bundle up if it's a cold day. But uh, they'll put the blankets over you and give introduce you to their horse and then drive you through Central Park. And it it really is uh, just a wonderful way to just get in the Christmas mood and really the mood of New York because the carriage rides have been going on in New York. Oh my gosh, it's it it, it has just been the longest time. It's probably one of the, the most fun things that people like to do in New York. Uh, these buggies have been rolling around since the 1880s and most of the drivers are Irish and, um, you know, the Irish have a love of their horses anyway, but um, they have specific, specific places where they, um, they uh, uh, stable and feed and take care of their horses. And uh, it, it, it's just uh, a really fun experience. And of course, it's nice to get in a carriage. It's really a lot of fun.
Well, this is something I've only done a few times. Uh, I, I just love it though. The Palm Court um, at the Plaza, the old Plaza Hotel is probably one of the most elegant places that you could enjoy high tea. And uh, so we have high tea included for you today. And I doubt very much anybody will will uh, grab much more beyond that because it is really uh, filling. There's lots of, of beautiful food served on each table. And, um, you know, there's little sandwiches to sweet desserts, uh, sweet and salty, lots of different teas. It's a wonderful experience. And I know that will uh, definitely fill you, but it is a really amazing experience. It's one that I absolutely adore. It's, it's really neat. And, uh, you know, there aren't that many places, uh, uh, a few places where high tea is, is really very popular. So it's really taking off on a tradition out of, out of uh, London and uh, it, it very much uh, adored to do, be done here in New York City. So uh, really a lot of fun. And right across the street from where you will be, um, uh, at the plaza doing the uh, high tea, you can walk over to some of the Christmas markets that are in Columbus Circle. And let me tell you, these are awesome Christmas markets. It, it is really fun. And, uh, you know, you can find anything from sampling candies and and uh, lights to ornaments to coasters to just uh, wonderful little gifts made out of wood. And there are probably 50, 60, maybe even 100 stalls. And it is really a fun way to uh, pick up a few little Christmas things before you uh, uh, get ready to go to the Radio City Rockettes for the evening. But lots of really great food. And there's a few things that... Um, a little bit later, I might suggest to you to uh, pick up there and, and at least get by and do some sampling. So a lot of fun. And you can see the markets are, are just, uh, people love it. They they walk through here and, and uh, somehow, no matter how cold it is, uh, it's amazing how, it's, how, how much time you can spend there and really enjoy. Well, we are going to end our evening. Um, at back to Radio City Music Hall. We'll give you a little time at the hotel to freshen up and we're gonna head out to uh, the Christmas Spectacular. And this is hosted by the Radio City Rockettes. And let me tell you, it is absolutely one of the best shows that you will see. It's fast paced and um, those 36 Rockettes are, are really on their game here. It is uh, absolutely wonderful. And of course, there are some very, very special, very special performances that are done at um, a Radio City Music Hall for the Christmas Spectacular. And this dance of the um, Tin Soldier is is really one that you will never forget. I I, I love it. And the minute they start it, I, I I don't want to hardly blink. It is so much fun to watch. And um, I know you will watch and enjoy as well. But Santa Claus always makes his appearance right toward the end with the Rockettes dressed as his reindeer. And he gets out and wishes all of you a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. And of course, we're going to be doing that at the very end of this show. So um, it is a, a, a great way to enjoy uh, 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 your day in uh, New York. So day three. So we're going to do a little more, more sightseeing and we're going to kind of head toward the south southern part of Manhattan, lower Manhattan, and take you into some of the different neighborhoods of New York. And these neighborhoods uh, over the years, uh, it might start out as uh, an Italian or a German uh, neighborhood. Uh, but it, it sometimes evolves. This is the Italian neighborhood now, but what you see even down the street here, the Chinese have kind of moved in to this neighborhood a little bit, but I'll tell you what, it is still um, a, a great area to have uh, great Italian seafood as well, or uh, uh, Italian food as well. It's just absolutely a, a neat area. 
Um, but you're going to see a lot of different things. Uh, Chinatown, um, there had the, this this gate to Chinatown was given to the city of New York by uh, a sister city in China, and um, this entire neighborhood is probably one of the most densely populated neighborhoods in the country. And uh, we'll just take you down through there because once you go through the gate, it's like you're in China. It is a completely um, uh, a complete Chinese neighborhood and from the shops to uh, the groceries to everything out on the street that you see is really uh, a very much part of the Chinese um, environment. But again, um, very, very densely populated. We are going to go down to uh, the uh, lower Manhattan 9-11 uh, um, site. And of course, we'll walk around the fountains that are created in the footprint of the uh, each one of the towers. And honestly, uh, just absolutely a, a very moving area. You can see here in the um, lower left corner of your screen um, the name of one of those uh, that uh, lost their life at, in the uh, explosions and, and the uh, terrorism that took place on 9-11 and uh, you'll see the uh, the living tree, the tree of life that is, has um, uh, stayed that uh, was right uh, in this area, but um, started to bloom again after the uh, uh, site was cleared. And it, it's just really a, a moving area. Uh, it's quiet, reflective area where people um, have a chance to just kind of walk around and kind of reflect on what happened and and the things that happened that day on 9-11. And then we are gonna take you down into the museum. It is a very somber place, um, but uh, everybody will have a chance to kind of walk around on your own. There are maps that will lead you into certain areas. There are some um, tours that you can join if you want to, to listen to a tour, but very much, uh, um, something that uh, is dedicated to remembering those who lost their lives here, never to be forgotten. And uh, uh, some of the, the things that were um, uh, salvaged from the, um, the destruction is it, it's just hard to, to even imagine it. So we're going to do a, a fun dinner tonight that is uh, something that uh, maybe some of you have done, maybe some of you not, but we're going to head into uh, Greenwich and do a, a really fun um, introduction to some of the food that is very popular in the Greenwich Village area. Um, it, it's uh, a little bit of Italy, a little bit of Soho, a little bit of, of uh, Greenwich Village, but you'll get a chance to taste a pizza and cookies and cheese and, oh my gosh, I can't think of meatballs, a little Italian. So there's a little bit of uh, everything and I absolutely, always enjoy it because uh, many of the young folks that um, uh, take people on tours are, you know, sometimes they're, they, they're on Broadway, so they've got a really great sense of humor. Some of them are, are um, uh, you know, different professions, but they always definitely give you uh, a, a really great story about the food, about the neighborhood, about uh, maybe somebody who owns the shop, um, it just all of it. And it's a wonderful way to munch your way through uh, uh, Greenwich Village and um, enjoy a little dinner. And then in the evening, um, we do have, oops, there's there's a little pizza. You're going to get a little slice of pizza and it is good and thick and, and, and really fun. Um, uh, uh, the candy, some of the things that you're going to try are, are really a lot of fun. So I know that you will totally enjoy um, your, your uh, dinner that is out on the street in, um, in New York. Then we will be getting tickets for you to uh, go to a Broadway show. You'll have orchestra seating at uh, uh, a show, and that will be announced um, Oh, probably fairly soon, as soon as the theater season um, announcements are made, we'll be able to get tickets for a show. And uh, so I, I know you'll enjoy. And, and uh, another day three is another very packed day with uh, the 9-11 the, the tour, um, Lower Manhattan, 
um, our, our food tour uh, of uh, uh, Greenwich Village and of course, orchestra seating at a Broadway show. So it, it's a lot of fun. Well, day four is also a really wonderful day. And uh, we always have people say, I need just a little bit of time to myself when I'm in New York. And we have such a great location. We are so close to where all of the shops and and um, all the activities are um, just off of uh, um, Fifth Avenue. And, and of course, all the way along, there's, there's so many shops and things to do. If people want to do a little bit of shopping, maybe they might want to pop over to the Museum of Modern Art. It's just down the street from the hotel. Um, but you have a morning on your own. And whatever you choose to do, you can do. I know we always have people that are getting up and wanting to be on um, on TV uh, at one of the early morning shows, and you can certainly get up and do that. So your morning is free, and you can get up and do whatever you want in the morning. But we are going to meet again, and we're going to do something that maybe some of you, even if you've been to New York a number of times, maybe have not done, and that is uh, heading over to Brooklyn. And uh, Brooklyn has become a really, really popular area of, of uh, New York for touring, and there is just lots to see and do in Brooklyn. People really enjoy it. Uh, there's a, a different promenades, the, uh, the St. George Hotel, the Plymouth Church, the uh, Brooklyn Heights, uh, just all kinds of different things. And you're going to have a chance to see some of those things. You know, th this is one area that's known for uh, the brownstones. And a lot of times when you are watching a program that is filmed or a sitcom or something that's filmed in New York, um, uh, they may well live in Brooklyn and they live in one of these brownstones and these walk-ups and and uh, th they're just really charming. So we're going to take you through neighborhoods so you can see some of these things as you are um, uh, uh, riding and enjoying the views from, from the bus. But there are some very, very popular areas. And um, there is an area called Dumbo. And uh, it, it's really short for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. And that's uh, really kind of what you're seeing here. And um, this is a really popular area. Um, <laughs> uh, but people love frequenting this. And there are shops um, on, on both sides of the street, but there's also a lot of vendors. And a lot of this takes place under the bridge. And uh, so it's, it's just fun. But things like this are the kinds of things that have popped up over the years that um, have really made each one of these boroughs very uh, unique or very different. And um, there's also uh, some famous streets in Brooklyn that you're going to want to uh, uh, take advantage of. Flatbush Avenue is one of the, the famous streets. Here it is. And um, this starts at, at the Manhattan Bridge and um, runs south to the Rockaway Peninsula. So along here, just dozens and dozens and dozens of restaurants, shops, stores, um, all kinds of different landmarks along the way. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, plaza, uh, malls, and, and that kind of thing. So you're going to see a lot and, and enjoy a tour of of. Uh, Brooklyn, that is something that um, maybe maybe has been missed on, on previous trips. And for those of you who um, uh, haven't been to New York, this will be a highlight because when people uh, you're talking to uh, uh, mentioning your your trip to New York, they're going to ask if you got over to Brooklyn because it's it's becoming super famous. Well, they have some wonderful little Italian restaurants and you're going to have a chance to try some more Italian food because Brooklyn is an area where a lot of the Italians who immigrated into New York have settled. And um, and so some of them even moved from uh, the uh, Manhattan over to Brooklyn and they have a, a little different style of Italian food. So you will definitely enjoy this. It is a lot of fun. Well, one of the reasons that we want to take you to Brooklyn, especially on a Christmas tour, is because they have some neighborhoods over here that are just unbelievable. And of course, the most famous one is Diker Heights. And every house in Diker Heights 
is decorated for the holidays in detail that is just absolutely incredible. When you talk about having the Christmas spirit, you are going to get into the Christmas spirit here. There are house after house after house, a little neighborhood areas. You can, uh, some of the neighbor, the areas, uh, we might let you um, just get off the bus and walk down a street that we can't take a bus down. And, um, and maybe we meet you on the other end of that street. It is absolute, so much fun. And you, we will, you'll just laugh because here you see not one tin soldier uh, outside a house, but maybe 20 or not one snowman, but maybe five. So they, they just absolutely go bananas and it's, it's really fun to see. And, uh, and, and it's like a contest and everybody kind of helps each other to make um, a, their, their lighting displays something that is really incredible, but it is, it is really fun. Some, some houses even have light, like life-size Santas and sleighs and, and that kind of thing. And some of them even pump Christmas carols on loudspeakers out into the, uh, into the neighborhood because they know people are going to get out and walk from one end of the block to the other. So they just want to make your Christmas really, really special. And, you know, once something like this gets started, it's almost impossible to end. So it, it definitely is a really, really fun way to get in the spirit of the holidays. And I, I'll tell you, it is, it, it is just amazing and it's just laughable, but it is uh, amazing as well. So um, the day four will prove to be a really fun day. If you want to grab some shopping or go to the museum or uh, the natural history museum is wonderful. Uh, there's so many things that you could do walking right from the hotel. We're really right in the heart of all the action. And, um, and then of course the tour of Brooklyn will be absolutely wonderful and a lovely Italian dinner over there as well um, with uh, uh, the ending with the Christmas lights, uh, lights at Diker Heights. So it, it, it's just really a lot of fun. So then we're heading in the morning before we take off on our, uh, uh, on our flights home. We have a late afternoon flight. Um, we're going to give you an opportunity to get out to the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. And uh, it, it, it's just one of those things. It's so iconic uh, in, in um, a New York City. But the Statue of Liberty is, is just really um, an amazing gift to us from uh, the French government. And as a thank you for um, helping them in, in different uh, uh uh, controversies around the world. And it, it really became a symbol of freedom and democracy. And it is absolutely neat. They, they call the lady that you see holding the torch, um, Liberty Enlightening the World. And it, it really is uh, just an, an amazing, amazing sight. And you'll have a chance to get, um, we'll take the ferry over to uh, Liberty Island, which is what you're seeing here. And um, get a chance to just walk around, get some really, really good photos. Um, and you see kind of behind the Statue of Liberty, the boat that is docked that uh, and you go under that green awning and then um, have a, have the opportunity to to just walk in the area. You can walk all the way around. You can walk walk around the star, which you see the pedestal um, that Lady Liberty is standing on is uh, a star, and it, it is just really quite beautiful. But then on the um, right side of the screen where you see the flag is the new museum that uh, has was opened in May of 2019 for visitors to give them a little bit fuller um, understanding of uh, the, the Statue of Liberty and what it meant. And this is absolutely awesome. They started construction um, in 2016 and it took three years and it, it has three main components, and one is accessibility, education, and stability and sustainability. And um, they they just want people to have a deeper understanding of what this national monument's importance in history is. And it, it I think it's absolutely beautiful. 
Um, it really has enhanced Liberty Island and enhanced people's visit over here. And to be honest with you, um, you know, going over to the Statue of Liberty was always a wonderful experience, but this has just made that experience so much better. There's lots to see. Um, you, you know, you, you really get um, uh, the opportunity to see what some of the life-size um, uh, uh, features of Lady Liberty um, are. There's, like you can see over on the right-hand side of the screen, um, a copy of the mask. Um, that that uh, she has, but it's just it's it's absolutely neat, and it it was meant. You know, they always felt like eighty percent of the visitors that left here were were just never really got all of what they should have gotten from a visit to the island, and now they they honestly feel like people um, understand this a lot more, and so hopefully, uh, if you've been there. Um, and ha and haven't been there since 2019. Um, uh, this will definitely add to to even if you've done it before to, to your experience. And then we take the ferry over to Ellis Island. And this is uh, really quite it's quite interesting, I think, because um, you know it it is where people uh, so many people came into this country. And you know, there, there. Prior to Ellis Island, there were a number of entry points for immigrants to come into the United States: San Francisco, um, L.A., um, New Orleans, and and of course, New York City was one of the most famous because, with all the political unrest and everything going on in Europe at uh, in in the 1800s, uh, people wanted to leave. They, their religious persecution was one thing, economic distress, just total instability, what was going on in Europe. And they saw, you know, the, the famines, everything um, brought people to want to seek a better life. And they saw that what was going on in the United States of America was a place that they could have more freedom. And so this uh, was not really constructed until uh, like 1892, I think was was when the first immigrants arrived. And I don't know if many of you um, remember the story. There was a little uh, girl, uh, she was uh, 16, and she came over on the first boat. She was the first one to step off in Ellis Island. Her name was Annie Moore. And there's a statue uh, at Ellis Island of Annie Moore. It used to be outside and it would greet people as they were stepping off of the um, of the ferry coming over, but it's been moved inside now. I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it isn't out any longer. But there is a statue of Annie Moore um, in Ireland. She got on the boat in, in Cove in Ireland and um, it's uh, where she left for America with her two um, young brothers. And they uh, survived the passage and she was the first person to step off. And so she was honored with uh, um, a statue. And it's kind of a, an interesting a little story. So you have to read a little bit about it when you get over there. But over 62 years, more than 12 million immigrants uh, arrived into the United States via Ellis Island. And it was really kind of a scary thing. Um, and I think people had the idea that uh, a lot of these people stayed on Ellis Island for a long period of time, but many of them were really only there for a couple of hours. If they had all of their paperwork and everything um, in order. First and second class passengers went through immigration processes on board the ships they came in on. But uh, the people who were in steerage, which is the third class passengers, um, had to uh, go uh, through a, maybe a more personal inspection. And they, they were looking for their health. They were looking for uh, people that might have a bad reputation or criminals or that sort of thing. And, and they were detained. Um, so that they did have health inspection and that was super important. And there were some eye diseases that were going around at the time. And, and that was one thing that they uh, checked them out for. 
uh, very carefully. But most of these people came in and um, they had to leave their bags down on the lower level and then climb up the steps into the arrival hall. And um, in, in this arrival hall, there were uh, those uh, kind of rope lines that went in and out and in and out and in and out. Offices were all up in the upper level. And then um, as you see toward the back on the lower level, then once they called them up and identified them, um, and I looked at their paperwork to make sure they were in order. They had to go into the rooms behind there and for their uh, physical um, inspections. And then um, when they passed through there, uh, they uh, took the ferry back and, and uh, um, they could buy some small um, little bits of food or whatever get their train tickets and off they were to the new world. So this this really was a place that when you're looking out the windows on the, um, the left side there, you saw the Statue of Liberty and realized you were pretty darn close. Uh, this was a pretty darn uh, lucky place for you to be. So it, it, it really is a kind of a, a great way for us to, to end the trip and thinking of how lucky we are to have been born in this country and have the opportunities that, that we have had. And, and so many people coming in into these areas, uh, we're, we're just looking for an amazing future. Uh, Ellis Island closed in 1954. The actual you know, it really quit receiving a lot of people in, in like the late 20s, 1920s, um, but uh, it was open until 1954. It was used for a number of different things, but finally was closed and um, has have really become uh, just really a symbol of, uh, you know, of America, open arms and, and hoping that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, people find what they're looking for when they're coming here. So it's uh, really, oh, there's a little statue of Annie Moore. I was thinking I was looking for it, but <clears throat> so you'll have a, a chance to see that. And I know she's in one of the um, the rooms uh, uh, at Ellis Island. So hopefully you'll, you'll see that. But uh, I love going to uh, uh, Liberty Island and Ellis Island. It's always such uh, an amazing way to, uh, for us to appreciate our own heritage. And many of us have relatives that came through Ellis Island. So uh, <clears throat> that tickle in my throat, I've been able to get rid of it. <coughs> um, I've heard. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so hopefully you will have some really incredible memories of uh, this magical Christmas tour. There are so many beautiful things to see. And we have have packed day one, day two, day three, day four, and even on the last day, uh, some really phenomenal things for you to enjoy. So here we are. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I don't think we don't have uh, round trip air, airport transfers. I'm sorry I added that on there, but we don't have that included. Uh, but it's round trip air to New York City, um, a private motor coach transportation, four nights accommodations, um, eight meals with four breakfasts, the high tea, and three dinners. Uh, but uh, uh, honestly, you'll you'll find that there's plenty of food and and uh, lots here for you to enjoy. All the admissions are included. Porter each service of one bag per person at the hotel. Taxes and gratuities are all included. We always use audio listeners on our tours of New York, especially when we go down by uh, Rockefeller Center. So you can keep track of where we are because it's always very, very crowded. Not included are things of meals. Uh, that's This is all listed on the brochure, but it's meals other than those that are listed, beverages other than coffee, tea, and water, items of a personal nature, the travel protection plan, which is outlined in the, the brochures, um, and airline baggage fees. We know some of you um, if you're coming as a couple, sometimes only take one bag. So we just don't want to be charging you for things that you're not going to be using. So, and any fees that might be related to health testing, if something like that would come up, there's nothing right now. The activity level, you can see we're, we're on the move a lot, but we're using the motor coach. There's not a tremendous amount of walking. Even when we do the walking tour in 
um, uh, the, the walking food tour, that is, uh, you're, you're going from one little place to another. It's not long, there are no long distances. Um, you're gonna walk maybe a half a block and, and sample something and, and uh, listen to a little story and then they'll move on and do something else. So it really is uh, a fun way to do things, but you definitely want to be able to, to be out and about and walking um, some short distances at a time, but it is uh, definitely uh, an exciting tour with lots of, of activity um, every single day. The tour pricing, uh, $39.35 per person double occupancy and $45.89 per person single. We do require a $500 deposit to confirm your space. And the reservation deadline on this is August 24th. And I know this gives you a lot of time to think about it, but I will be honest with you and tell you that very often our New York trips are completely sold out. And um, the price on this is very good. There's a lot of, of really cool things on this trip and I and people really enjoy. And, um, and, and they do see that this is really a great value because uh, of course hotels in New York are incredibly expensive, just incredibly expensive and um, a motor coaching, all of it, but we do have a New York City guide that will be with us as well as someone from Star Destinations. August uh, 30th is final payment. And at that time we have to write the airline ticket. So that's right, why uh, the payment is when it is. Uh, there is an optional travel protection that's available to you. And there will be a brochure that is um, online for you to grab and, uh, and you wanna get that set in. Um, I will say that your $500 deposit is fully refundable up until the time of final payment. Uh, but uh, we definitely want to make sure that if you are interested in this, you get your name on the list because it, it definitely sells out very quickly. This is an incredible tour. And, um, you know, in the evenings, uh, we do have some uh, sh shows a couple evenings for you to do, but then you definitely can. Um, you've got one evening there that you can spend on your own and do some some fun things. So it it is uh, a really, really uh, great trip and uh, just a lot of fun. So we would love to have you join us in New York, December 9th through the 13th. It is highly recommend that you reserve your space today. And we did get through that pretty quick. So hopefully there are some questions. And um, uh, if, if there's something I didn't uh, answer for you, please uh, fire away or uh, send uh, uh, a little note to, to Carol on the uh, chat board and she will uh, um, and, uh, shout them out. So Carol, it's all oh, yours. We have some great questions. So here I'm gonna just start in. Uh, Dory says, I'm in Brooklyn. Can we see Cat's Deli where I'll have what she's having from Harry and Sally that uh, was filmed? Yes, of course. We're going to show you as much as we possibly can in Brooklyn. You're, you will definitely see it. You're not going in, but you will see it. Okay, we're not going in. Is that part of the morning? Don't we have morning free in Brooklyn? Uh, no, you have the morning free in Manhattan. Oh, Manhattan, okay. But we will, okay, we'll get to see it. We, we won't go inside, but we will get to see it. You will see Cat's Deli. And there's another deli that you would really enjoy seeing. It's down in Times Square. It's called the Roxy. And it's it's named after the guy that um, did all the, the original theater productions for Radio City Music Hall. He, he, they called him Roxy. And there's a Roxy Deli up in um, uh, up in the area of Times Square on 42nd Street, and uh, it's a really, really famous deli. So if you want to have a deli sandwich there, two of you might want to split one. So. Oh, okay. Let's see. There are a couple of questions about the flight schedule. Uh, number one, what is the flight schedule, and do you make the plane reservations for us? I think there's also. When when will the flight schedule be? And I think the I flight schedule the, uh, the flight schedule will come out really soon. We will have the flight schedule really soon. So we're going to be taking an early morning flight into New York. It is going to be early morning, 
and um, and we're having it. We'll have an afternoon flight on the return. And the reason for that is so that we can use Monday and Friday um, as touring days so that you really, um, you know, you're not just using those as travel days. Okay. Um, do you make the plane reservations? Yes. Yes. We do all of that. And um, the, the flights are included in the price. Okay. Uh, it isn't here, but I know at the last class somebody asked if they want to come early or go early to New York or stay later in New York City, how does that affect the flights? Cost? Uh, it, it doesn't really affect it at all. What they, they want to do, though, I, I, I mean, my recommendation would be that they stay late. Um, and, and then they go early with us. And then um, if they want to stay at the same hotel, we can um, keep them at the same hotel. And uh, that, that usually works out better. Some, I mean, if they need to go early, they can. It, it, sometimes we just can't get the, the hotels are super packed at this time of, of the year. But um, usually they give us uh, a few days maybe a day or two early, but mostly it's always a day or two late, so later. But we we make all those arrangements. They just have to tell us what they want. If they want to get their own hotel or, or, or whatever, they certainly can do that. We'll just arrange the flights based on, on um, what days they want to come and go. Right, okay. And I know somebody had called me and asked, do you know which airline we will be using? I don't, not, I don't right now. But we will know uh, that that's all going to get set probably here in another. Oh, it'll be a it'll probably be about two weeks, but we will know. OK, great. Uh, can you say more about the Broadway show, musical or drama? When will the show be determined? The show will be determined. And, and actually, all of the show tickets in that start being available in September, early September. And um, it's really the beginning of the theater season. And so once that comes out, we we go in and grab tickets and we get orchestra seat tickets. You're going to have absolutely great seats. We always we use a broker to get in and get good seats for us. And um, you'll they, they will love it. it it's always going to be, um, you know, a, a, a famous it isn't a play. We never we, we haven't ever done a play. We always do one of the most popular shows or uh, even as something new. So it, you know, we'll give you some some idea of that uh, as soon as we have them. Okay. Uh, do we need to pack snow boots, warm coats, et cetera? Always advisable. I think, um, you know, especially the day, you know, the days that you're going to be outside, like the day that you are going to... Um, uh, want to be at the Christmas markets and as something like that, you're going to be in and out, uh, in, in inside and outside of that day. And, and so it's always great to take it along, but you know, the weather in, in December in New York is usually, we found that the, the, the weather can be like in the forties and it's pleasant and it's, 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 uh, you know, unfortunately probably not snowy. It, it, it's not typical that there would be snow. So uh, that's, uh, December is just an excellent time. You do want a, a warm coat and you want gloves and um, a boots, I think, keep your feet warm, especially if you're going to want to get out of the hotel, like even in the evening, if you want to, um, you know, we've had people, we go down to the top of the rock and people say, you know what, I'm going to walk home on my own. They want to do some of their own thing. And where we're staying is so close to, to some of that that it's easy to do. But you want to be warm. So okay. I would definitely take boots. Thank you. Okay, another question. What is the cost approximately of the travel protection? Boy, I didn't print that out. I am so sorry. I didn't print it out. It's mm -hmm. on. Um, it's probably on the, the website. It is on the website. I yeah, I, I I know it is. I'm sorry. I didn't. I just didn't print that out. I only printed out the brochure. I guess I I might add. It is age based. Yes, it is. 
So it, it depends on age and uh, how long. It's it's probably not really too high. It's might be a couple hundred, uh, about three, three hundred. It 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 just depends on your age. That's crazy, but that's the new thing. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, where do we fly from? Is it Omaha? Omaha. Mm -hmm. uh, will there be transportation available from Lincoln to Omaha? You know, we've talked about that, and um, I think when we initially started doing this one, we, we included it, but there are, one of the things that we ended up doing when we were talking about this was not doing that because there are so many people that are coming from different areas. They If they come early or stay late, they're paying for something that they're not using on at least one direction, and then if uh, they're they're in Omaha and they want to you know, they don't need to uh, get on a bus and there are people coming from out regions that uh, don't want to come into Lincoln. So we, we the, it was eliminated. Okay. I will add that uh, travel uh, protection is somewhere between 350 and 450 based on your age. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, how long is our free morning in Manhattan? That is, what time do we board the bus for the rest of the day? I think you'll probably board about two o'clock. Two? I, I, I think we'll probably have you boarding or meeting about two o'clock, 2.30, and then so we can get over to Brooklyn, do some sites, do dinner, and then um, uh, do Diker Heights. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, if we know an ancestor came through Ellis Island, will we have an opportunity to find documentation? Yes, there is a place at Ellis Island, but there's also a website that they always give you and um, uh, so that you can get on the, the Ellis Island website and um, search through that. But there, there is a, a, a room that you can go to, and um, there are uh, um, uh, people there that will help you. Okay. Um, Kathleen asks, will your contact information be available today? Do you have another slide on that with that? Uh, the contact information, I don't have a slide on that, but I can certainly tell you um, that you can reach our office. Uh, any time, and uh, Wendy will be able to answer any questions for you. And um, if anybody would want to write this down, we have a toll-free number, and it's 800-284-4440. And currently, Wendy in our office is handling this tour. Okay, who are, I'm sorry, who was? Wendy. Oh, good. Yeah, Wendy will be handling this until Liz returns from maternity leave. Yes. Okay. Oh, Dory said, I just found double occupancy insurance for ages 60 to 74 is $409 for travel protection through uh, Travel X. But I think I think Kathy also said you can also check with your home insurance agency. Yes, if you have a preferred uh, travel insurance provider, uh, you know you're certainly welcome to. We are only offer this. We have been using um, TravelX for many many years. It's a part. Uh, of uh, of like it, it was a part originally of Mutual of Omaha. Now it, it it's a part of Berkshire Hathaway, and we just have really good luck with them. Um, they they pay very promptly, and uh, you know it it is um, we're just just really happy with the service that we get from them. If we and hopefully we never need to use them, but you know it is always something for you to think about and and. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, you know, some people use it, some people don't, but we certainly advise that, so. Okay. 
And let's see, Terry said we're talking about parking fees at Omaha. Then I think that what she's talking about is that there's no bus going out there. But now I know some, a lot of people do use Omaha Lane. All that is fairly cheap. Okay. Which one? Which one? Now, I, I know when I go into Omaha, I use <laughs> that budget parking lot. Um, it's $6.50 a day. If you get on the internet and make a reservation, it's $6 a day. And um, they have a little shuttle that when you pull in there, it follows you to your car. The little guy actually helps you take the luggage out of your car, puts you, puts you on the shuttle, and drops you at the airport. Okay. And they circulate constantly at the airport. So, um, I, I mean, it's the most convenient. That's what I use all the time. And the last time I went in there, my car was loaded with snow and he got out and helped me clean off my car. So it was okay. okay. It's just so inexpensive there that, um, yeah. It, it is. And I'll, I'll be really honest with you. By the time we charter a motor coach to get everybody in and out, you're paying a lot more than what you are going to pay for parking for five days. Yes. Okay. Uh, Dorothy asks, will you help organize groups of us to use Oma Lane to get to and from Omaha or provide us with lists so we can contact people to share one of the Oma Lane shuttles? I actually can answer that when, when we have a pre-trip meeting, which is usually what, three weeks before? About that, and yes. Usually, yeah, you'll meet everybody who's going, and usually we just, you know, uh, four to six of us just say, hey, you want to ride with me? So, but I could, but why don't you answer if you have another answer? No, I, I, I think that that's a, a perfect uh, thing to do. And that's usually how groups will handle that. They get together um, at that meeting prior to uh, that, that we have about three weeks out and, and uh, make sure that everybody is uh, aware of uh, what's, who's going and, and uh, you know, and then there are people who are coming from a greater distance. So they're dealing with their own, own decisions and some people may want to go in and stay overnight in Omaha or that sort of thing. So, um, you know, it just definitely is something that is handled best at that meeting. And, and, and what I would add to that folks is that at that meeting, uh, we're, we'll happily share everybody's contact information because as you're traveling together, you're going to want to have the contact information of the other people who you were traveling with. So, um, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem working those issues out. Okay, let's see. Oh, Doris says the website says there are only three single slots left. Would you explain why that is, Kathy? Well, the hotels will give us um, uh, uh, so many rooms that are they would uh, allow us to just have one person in. It's just limited to the. It's all based on on, on the hotel availability. And of course, you know, us, uh, the single rooms are smaller because uh, uh, obviously in a double room, two people are paying for the room. In a single room, there's only one person paying for the room. So it's, it's they're a little smaller rooms and hotels just limit the number of single rooms that they have. And when you're making a group reservation, they'll only give us so many of those rooms. Okay. Um, and actually Kate said, she signed up to travel single, but's willing to share if possible. So she asked, "How would that work?" You know, if you're if you want to do that, you you let us know because frequently we'll have someone else call in and say that they would like to um, they would like to go, but they would like a roommate and they don't have a roommate. So what we will do is uh, set up a call between. Um, the two of you or, or maybe meet for lunch or something like that and see if you think that you would be compatible to spend those few days together. Okay. And, and really, even if you room together, you don't have to be together the whole time. You're just on, on uh, uh, sharing a room and, and uh, mingling with the other with the rest of the group like all, all, all of the others. So it's not a commitment to be with somebody. Um, but we just definitely will do uh, uh, ladies together and gentlemen together. Okay. Uh, let's see. Nancy asks, what is the maximum number of people on this tour? Uh, the minimum number is 25. And the maximum 
will depend on uh, uh, making sure that we have availability for them. And I would say the, the that number would be somewhere around 35, um, probably on the outside 40. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next one. Do we need to sign up with Ollie and with your company? Well, you just need to make a reservation with us, yes. And we will provide all of the registration information to uh, Ollie uh, on a regular basis so they know who all is coming and who all is a part of it and how many, we where we are number-wise. And I think to get to their website, Bob, you might have the exact, but I think if you type in Ollie at UNL Travel, that it will take you to a link to their website. Yes. Correct? That's correct. Okay. And the phone number again is 800-284-4440. Correct. Okay. And if you would ask for Wendy, they will connect you to her and she can answer your questions. Great. Okay. Are there any on Zoom that I did not answer or have her answer the questions? Or if you have any comments. Also, I was told you can go to the catalog, the first pages, and you have, there's a link there too. So if you want to go on to the catalog. I oh, I will say we we have recorded this. I'll send it to Jeanette. She'll send it to Star. They'll download it, edit out the first part where everybody's just talking before the class started. And then to everyone who has registered for the class, we will send out uh, the transcript and all the slides from this presentation. Carol, I've just uh, entered another link to get directly to Ollie Travels with Star Destinations. It's in the chat. It's stardestinations.com slash UNL Ollie dot or UNL Ollie slash. So if, if you want to share that with the people in the room. See, I see that on Zoom. I, almost everybody is, is on Zoom today. So I will write that down. Okay. That will take you right to the star destinations. There's a place where I know Kathy, you can tell a little more if you want, but it says download brochure. It's a beautiful two page brochure. It has one page of the insurance. Yes, it does. It uh, there and the the registration form is there, and uh, it's just everything you need is right there. Uh, so it, it really helps you. You can make a decision. You don't have to buy the insurance right now if you don't want to, but it needs to be included with your final payment. Are there any questions that I haven't asked that were in the chat? If so, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and just. Uh, Tell us what you think. Well, I, I just one one final reminder. Uh, you know, because this is always a popular tour and it it always sells out. That uh, it's best to put your five hundred dollar deposit down and save your space. It's a lot easier to cancel than it is to get um, the be cleared off of a wait list. And the last last tour we had, there was a quite a long wait list, so. If you're thinking about it, please, please go ahead and register. 